All right, everyone. So for today, uh, I've got another handout for you. And uh, we're going to look at this handout and talk about this concept of backlinks. This is one of the big concepts in SEO, backlinks. Uh, there's many other names for it. Inbound links, incoming links, links to your site. Right? There's all of these names, backlinks. Basically, it's a link from someone else's site to your site. And nowadays, that's one of the most important things for SEO. We'll see why in a moment. We'll see how to get them. We'll see how to check if we have any and such. But backlinks are a big thing nowadays. So I've got a handout for you. Your computer should be on. We'll go back to the network folder if you forgot where that is. Remember, you can only access it from our computers, not your laptop, unfortunately. So you want to go to our computer window here on your desktop and scroll down to the network location, Classroom Data Z. Scroll down to our folder, which is Campus um, Wednesday. Uh, so you want to open the Wednesday folder. And everything from the previous weeks is there, of course. And there's a new item, Campus SEO 3 backlinks. So copy that to your desktop. You can print this out later. The printer's off. You want to copy that to your desktop or flash drive or email it to yourself, the one that says Campus SEO 3 backlinks. Copy that over, and then we'll open it to look at it. Campus SEO3 backlinks. Let's double click that to view it from your desktop, not the network folder, from your desktop. And let's see here, this is a two page document. Again, you can print this a little later, but it also has some links that are active that you can follow, which we will look at. Backlinks strategy. What are backlinks and why are they important? Nowadays, the search engines care about quality more than ever. The rankings of your website is elevated when quality sites link to it. Backlinks then are very important. Oh, here's the, uh, backlinks then are very important to create authority and quality on your website, which in turn raises your page rank. So I'm going to make a note here, and this is these are things that will be coming up also throughout the day and if you think back about them how they apply to the previous days I'm going to mention three big keywords here longevity um, authority and content I'll add these notes to the network folder a little later Well, we've got longevity, authority, and content. Before we get back to backlinks. Longevity, authority, content. All of these three things are things to think about when regards, with regards to SEO. So longevity simply means how long has your online presence existed? So the search engines will give a little more preference, a little more precedence, a little more higher ranking perhaps to websites that have existed longer. So if I created my site a year ago, but my competitor created it five years ago, they have a little bit of an edge. They've been around longer. That's why when we do a search for certain keywords, there's websites there that have been around a long time that we're going to have a very hard time knocking out because they've just been around there that long. So the sooner you start to create your website or your Twitter or your online presence, basically, the longer that you are online, that helps your SEO. It's one of the many signals, one of the many things that the search engines look at. And we can look this up ourselves. This is public knowledge. How long has a website existed? Um, that would be using Whois to look up the length of a website length of time a website has existed, or let's say the age of a website, using who is to look up the age of a website. So we can look up any website. That's basic information that we can look up. 
perhaps not who created the website, that can be set up via private registration. We can look at basic things like how long has it existed. Let's take a quick detour to do that actually. Go ahead and open your web browser and let's go to whois.net. There are many websites out there that will give you this whois information. This is just one of them. Whois.net. You can type any website here. Uh, just for fun, you can search one of my first websites, vmcinc.net. vmcinc.net. Did I mention it in this class that I, I was starting off? You know, in the year 2000, 2001 or so, I was learning web design and all of that. I got a degree. I started as a web designer. I said, okay, I need a website. I'm a web designer. I need a website. Let me go buy a website. The .com of my company name was a whole like $21. But the .net was only like $12. And I was just starting off, star starving student. $12, good enough. So I bought the .net. I was in about 2001, 2002 or something. And then years later, as I got more profitable and such, I said, let me buy the .com, because it's the more common one. I went to go buy .com, it was taken. And someone was gladly going to gladly sell it to me for $500. So I said, never mind. I've built up enough of a cachet and a brand at .net that I don't need .com. So people always ask, you know, what should the name of my website be, .com, whatever. And honestly, nowadays, any name doesn't really matter. Because I believe I've said before, before you knew about it, what is a Twitter? What is a what is a Flickr? What is a Facebook? What what is an Instagram? What are all of these things that we know about today that uh, now that we know about them, the now that we know about them, they make sense. But when we didn't know about them, I don't know what that is. So. <coughs> yes. They used to put the name of the person that actually on here. They don't do it. Anymore. Let me ask you. Let me ask the class. Are you getting no data available? Yeah. Yeah. No, I got mine. Every time yeah. I click yeah. a little filter, the more stuff appears, but it's all on there. Okay, like I said, there's more than one who is website. Uh, let's try this one instead. If you're not getting any data, let's go to. Um, you know, anyone's, it doesn't matter, whatever one you like to use, but I'm going to show this one right here. Whois.ican.org. Whois.ican.org. They, all of this is coming from like one big phone book. Every, every, any, every website can access this, so we don't really need whois.net. So for whatever reason, it's not quite working. Go to any other place like this one. Whois.ican.org. They're one of the big names in the, in the world of the internet. I can. They're basically the one where everyone, where everyone's website gets saved at. The name of the website, that is. Uh, the internet company for network something. I don't remember. Yeah, but, OK, good. So go to ICANN right here, bmcinc.net, or any other website you want to look up. Maybe your competitor. But whois.ican.org, just do a quick search there, bmcinc.net. And I want to pull up this information that I'm saying regarding one of the tenets of SEO, longevity. So it's going to say here information, registrant contact, admin contact, tech content, <coughs> contact, there might be other ones. But when you create a, a website, when you go buy a website at GoDaddy or Bluehost or Yahoo or wherever, you create a website and it asks you for this information. And so this is, uh, this, is, this is public information by default. If you don't want your public information, when you purchase this stuff at Bluehost, GoDaddy, whatever, they often, always, they often also sell private registration, sell you private registration, so that for a few dollars or whatever per year, per month, they will have, you know, like, like if you had your name private in the phone book, remember the phone book, you could either be in the phone book or pay to not be listed in the phone book. This is the same sort of thing here. I've got this set up with a PO box and such, so I'm okay that it has that info public for anyone to find. Unfortunately, spammers use this to find you and send you emails. So if you do have it, the option for private registration, it's useful, but it's not free. And ways around it are to get a PO box and a Google Voice number and these email addresses that are okay to be public. But the point of this is then 
note further down it says this was registered at godaddy.com this website was registered at godaddy contact this for abuse contact this number for abuse uh, important <coughs> dates here we go updated created so this website has existed since 2002 my birthday so that website's been around <coughs> over a decade. Um, your website might not be along that, around that long. That's fine. What I'm saying about the concept of longevity is that your website, part of your SEO is based on it, not the biggest part, of course, and I can't tell you what percentage. The search engines keep that as a trade secret. But as many of the things that we can do that I talk about in these classes you want to accomplish. So the longer you have a website, the better. Other information there. Again, this is all public. If, you, if, you're, if you're like, wow, I didn't know this was public, you can pay the providers some amount of money, either monthly or yearly, to keep this private. Just for fun here. SDCE.edu. Let's see how long this college's website has been around. SDCE.edu. It might ask you to fill in the CAPTCHA. This registry database contains only EDUs. Blah, blah, blah. Registrant. Kent Kieser. Tech Admin. Glenn Bowers. There we go. So, domain activated in 2004. So, we have had a website for a little over a decade as well. Okay, what about apple.com? Just looking up a few for, for interest. Um, Scrolling down somewhere, update created 1987. Now I, I I think it's a little iffy some of these dates because technically the web websites 1989 is when the code to make websites was invented basically. But there are some quote unquote websites that have existed from 87, 86, 85. I don't really think of them as websites because you could you, they weren't websites but they were servers that existed let's say yeah you can look up the very first websites there's a copy of the first website that still exists online but it's not from as early as 87 so that's that's just interesting but anyway the point of this is you can look this up you can look up you can look up people's website information at the very least you'll get the creation date Probably. You won't get maybe some of this contact info. But um, side note, uh, back in 2001, um, the Cartoon Network created a sub-channel called Adult Swim, and nowadays it's very popular. So they, they created Adult Swim. They had a bunch of cool TV shows, cartoons and such. I watched an episode of, of one of those shows, and at the very end, then they had this cool music on one of the episodes. At the very end, I saw a website on the credits of the uh, of, of that show. In 2001, not many websites, uh, not many TV shows had a website in their credits, but I saw a website on the credits. Went to the website and it still said, you know, coming soon, because everything was new. But I looked them up. I looked up that website on, you know, who is, and I saw contact information from a person. Nowadays, you don't really see a, a person's email anymore. It's all private. But I found the contact information from this person as part of Cartoon Network, and I sent him an email. And I said, hey, I liked the episode. It was really fun and all of that. And he replied. And he said, oh, great. We don't know how many people are watching, but thanks for watching. So I'm just saying that because sometimes you can pull up useful information here. Sometimes you can pull up the contact information of someone to help you land a job at that company. You know, it might have some admin contact of someone in marketing, and then you contact them and show them a portfolio, and you get hired. Who knows? Not everything is private all the time, although more of it is going toward there, because then, of course, if I can do that, spammers can do that. And spammers have automated software to do this. 
but this is to show that you want to have a website as long as possible. Well, I'm never going to be able to have a website older than my competitor if my competitor created it a year before me. There's no way around that. It, it doesn't exist. I didn't create my website in 1990. I created it in 1991. I cannot make it go back in time. There's no way to edit that. So then we have these other ways to counteract that. Authority and content. Okay, maybe your website doesn't exist for 10 years. Maybe it's only been around 7 years. But the, uh, the way you can counteract the negativity of not having enough longevity is authority. And that is, why should... Why should you rank higher than the competition? What articles, products, videos, stuff do you have to offer? What relevant and timely What's another word for content? Stuff. What's another word for stuff? Um, I'm trying not to say content because obviously content is the third one and I'll get to that. Products. Products. It's a little specific, but yeah, whatever your content is online, your products. What is relevant? Because this could be blog posts, this could be articles, etc. Relevant and timely. You're building authority. You're creating stuff. You're putting out stuff out to the web, out to the internet, that is relevant to people. You've created a how-to guide, a guide on how to use Peach, for example. Did I mention that so the brand new social network Peach previously? So, over on YouTube, we have a brand new video how to use Peach like a pro. There you go, number one result. So, um, YouTube, we made a video 12 minutes long a week ago. It's got 102 views. Actually, more than that. Sometimes these st statistics don't don't catch up, but actually it's got over 200 something views. <gasps> right there, 250. Wow. This is a video we made. No, not that one. But this is a video we made about. Just think what I could do Peach. with that plow. And uh, it's relevant, it's timely, because this is a new social network, it's like three weeks old now. Um, it might be a new one to get on because they might take off, who knows? For, for social media people, as soon as a new network comes out, we want to claim our name. So no one else does. Because if we want to claim our name later on, when Peach does get hot, it's taken. So at the moment, this has got 255 views compared to this one of 119, 153, 73. So the competition is making videos as well. Perhaps ours is one of the older ones. Yeah, three weeks. Things go so fast online. You've probably this heard of uploaded on January 11th. Okay, theirs is a little older than ours. Two days, but ours has got more views so far, because we put it on our website, we blogged about it, we tweeted about it, we posted on Facebook, we posted on Peach about it. We are becoming an authority on something. We are creating content that, will, that people will want to view, to read, to share. Let's see. Create something people want to share. That's how you get authority. Think about it in these terms. If, uh, you, if you had to write term papers in high school or especially college, let's say you wrote a 10-page paper, final project. You turned in your 10-page paper. Um, what happens, or what is the, re what is, the content of it could vary, but what's the requirement that a term paper has? References at the very end, works cited, references. If you turn in a paper, especially in college, without works cited, you get an F in the paper because you didn't cite where you got your knowledge. You are not a genius 
to have invented all of this knowledge to synthesize this 10-page paper. You built upon the shoulders of, of giants. You did research, you went to the library, you looked up stuff on Wikipedia, you did research, you found that information, you synthesized it, you made it your own, you wrote your 10 pages, but you based it on knowledge you got from others. That's how it's done. Authority on a website is very similar. I want to create a video that is relevant at the moment, that is timely, I, it's, it's, it's on now. I'm not going to write a video on how to use MySpace now. No one's using MySpace, really. This is timely, this is relevant. It's creating authority for my company. It's creating content that wants to be shared. So, the work cited on a term paper, the analog to that on your website is you're putting out stuff that people will want to link to. From their website, link to your website. That's sort of the works cited in the web. Someone else linking to your site. Someone else sharing your tweet, your video, whatever. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at your page video, and you have ads from some pretty big people on it. Like it starts out with a Wix ad. Mm -hmm. um, do you, did you ask for those, or do you have another ads coming out for Pete? So you're doing okay with the ad, but how are you going to benchmark? That is related, and it's so easy nowadays, really, to get to make money off of YouTube. It's relatively easy in that you can create a YouTube account, set up monetization, that's their term for it, and then they will put ads on your videos, relevant, hopefully, to your content, and then you can get revenue from those ads yourself. So, authority. That's one way to combat, well, we haven't been around that long, so we will create great content, because the authority comes from the content itself. So content, blogs, social media, review sites, or testimonial sites. Of many ideas. Uh, did I mention in this class that blog post about the essential list of content marketing? I don't know if I teach too many classes, so I'll show that class. I'll show that site in just a moment. Was it your colleague in this? Yeah. yeah. But was it in this class or another one? It was. Oh, uh, I think it was the video. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll mention that in a moment. Right now, the Is idea. He, yes. Yeah, that was this class. Yeah. Brand brand graphics in this class. Okay. Yeah. So the brand graphics website where we saw a list of all of these possible ideas of what to create. We had testimonials of video, we had um, newsletters, you know, all of that, that big list. Content. You're creating content. You're putting out content to the world, social media, blogs, whatever. You're getting on Yelp, etc. Content. All of that content then is helping build your authority to offset if you don't have longevity. The more of those three that you have, the better. Right? The longer you're around, the more content you have that makes you an authority, the better. So, for example, this guy right here, Just Cause TV. Um, Crash test dummies for dogs so and cats have He's got never been made. Subscribers. As a small business owner, views. it's a very. You know how every month Mr. Buckner gives us little views. bonuses? Can I get an advance? Same day we published it, but sharks again. we also shared it on like, various social have... media, so we're getting a little ahead. Yes. Do you already make money off of those videos? Because they're Yes and no. Um, you, you really get money when someone clicks on them. Just because they view them doesn't mean you make money off of them. You make money by someone clicking on them. I do need cocks, so they click and then we make money. If they see this commercial, I don't need cocks, I've already got AT&T, and they ignore it, they skip it, you don't get money from that. So it is related to actions, not just impressions, which is that you see the video, it's that you make an action click on it to view more, you give it a like, whatever, that's when you get made, paid, get paid from it. Yes? This guy, Carlos Gill, he's got almost 6,000 views. Yeah. He started January 9th. You're listening to Social 545. He's, this is the funny thing about this guy, Carlos Gill. He created two Peach videos. 
This one that only has 184 views, and another one that does have like a thousand. That's probably the one you're looking at. Uh, and he created two of them. I haven't looked at them to see what the difference is, but I kind of think a little bit that's a little bit of gray hat technique there, creating more than one video of the exact same topic. Unless it's really different, then I'd say that's okay, create two. I haven't seen the videos, but just by looking at their thumbnails and descriptions, it seems like he made the video twice and uploaded it and is trying to get double views from them. It's not a, the best technique, I would say, and it's not a bad technique. It's in the middle. I would say it's a gray hat technique. But he's got 1,700 subscribers. He's probably making okay money from YouTube. And he's got videos on everything. How to use Snapchat, how to do this and that. So he's got two of these right here. Major key success, Snapchat love, how to use Snapchat. So again, he, he doubles up on his videos. He double dips. It might work for him. I personally don't kind of don't like that to make multiple videos on the exact same topic. I want to vary it up, but it might work. Um, so then we will be able to see a measurement of our authority if we go back to our backlinks document. Question. On content. Well, sometimes you know there's something you read a website on an article. There's no date. Is there a way for me to check on the date? I want to see how many There should be. Um, there's probably a website out there that will help you with this, but let me that's a good point. There's always a way to check this if you know this trick. Let me just confirm this trick and then I'll mention it. But there's probably a website if you if you look it up how to check the date of an article. So this one clearly says January 1st, but let me just check something here. Does anyone remember or does anyone know the JavaScript to check the document creation date? I used it recently and I forgot it already, but it's going to be here somewhere. Get element document. There's a little bit of JavaScript that we can run on any website that's supposed to. JavaScript get documents. <coughs> oh, last modified, okay. Last modified. And it doesn't seem to be accurate like it's supposed to be, because it's saying today's date, not January 1st, so I guess that way won't quite work. Okay. Well, wouldn't that be last modified by today, though? Yeah, but it's the exact same time right now. It says 105, which is right now. It's saying like this was last modified right now when I viewed it. So that doesn't make sense. This, this is supposed to say January 1st, but when I tested it last week, it also said the moment that I looked at it for some reason. So I don't know if the specification is broken or something. Short answer then. Okay, how do you check how old someone's uh, blog post is? If they don't say it on the post itself, it might be a little bit of, it might be some hoops that you have to jump through to find that out. You might want to do a search for, you know, uh, check the date of a web page. Maybe there'll be something like that. Off the top of my head, I don't have that answer, but that's how I would go find that answer. The thing about blogs and such, I did say relevant and timely. Relevant is that you're creating content that um, that is that is useful for people. So relevant is useful content. Relevant is useful content. And timely is not old content. Quote unquote old. Because that's also hard to pin down what is old. Would you consider January 1st, 2016 old? Maybe, maybe not because there might be a brand new article every day. If there's a new article here every day, then this might be old, because you've already gone through 19 new articles. 
So it's okay to take an old article and repurpose it. So over here regarding blogs, repurpose your own blogs. It's okay to do that. Take an article that you wrote a year ago. Has, have things changed? Has the state of the industry changed? Have you learned something new? Is there something new you can, a new perspective that you can say on your article? What you can do is take the original article, add something new to it, and mark on the article, updated January 20th. So it'll have the original date, which preserves your longevity, but then it goes toward your authority and content by making it timely again. You've added a new paragraph, you know, new content a year later, and that could serve you well also, because instead of writing a brand new article, you can take an old one and update it. So if you go back to the, uh, the handout here, this is what I'm trying to get at, that the ranking of your website is elevated when quality sites link to it. Why would they link to it? We'll go into more detail, but you're creating blog posts, you're putting out tweets or whatever, you're, you're creating content to entice links, backlinks, incoming links, inbound links, it's different names for the same thing. Backlinks then are very important to create authority on your website, which raises your rank. I mentioned the two books again, and uh, you can get them on Amazon, digital books or real books, and um, I like them. They're pretty useful, pretty affordable. We're going to log into our webmaster tools in a bit and look at this, because the, the webmaster tools will tell us our backlinks. If I'm saying backlinks are so important, how do we know who's linking to us? When we set up these webmaster tools, it'll tell us. And we'll get to that in a moment. Yes? So basically, it's uh, like a site that I'm on that sends me to my site. Is it backlink? No, someone else's website links to your website. And we'll see examples of that. Like I could have, let's do it the easy way like this. I've got a website with a blog and I wrote an article about Peach. And I have a link in my article about Peach to Brand Graphics article about the importance of social media. So from my website, I link to someone else. I gave them a backlink. I want the same. I want a link from their website back to mine. That's what we're going to talk about. So when we look at what our backlinks look like, we'll talk about organizing them, taking advantage of them, and actually also dealing with bad backlinks, because that's a thing as well. But I'll get to that in a moment. Question? Yes, we'll get to that in a moment. So, what I'm going to do is before we get in, before we do any of this in the uh, in the webmaster tools, I'm going to pull up a couple of excerpts from the book. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the whole book. I'm not going to print this out. Three nine three dollars ninety nine cents is not so much to pay for these books. So, I'm going to show you a few excerpts for I'm going to say here directly to the microphone for educational purposes. I'm not stealing the book. Um, I'm going to show you a few excerpts of the book. I've got them on Kindle. You don't need a Kindle book. You don't need a Kindle e-reader to read Kindle books. You can read them on the website. You can get the free Kindle app on your device to read about SEO or Star Wars, whatever. You can you can get e-books and read them from the online reader. But I'm going to load up the SEO book 2016 and beyond. And there's a section in here once I find the table of contents. There's a section in here um, There's a section in here that talks about backlinks and examples, the, the how, the, there's the why and the how, of course, which we'll talk about. So um, the link is not working, so let me just fast forward through the book and I'll find the right place. Uh, 
Okay, so for example, if there are quality websites linking to my website that can increase my rank. Um, if I'm writing about social media and other social media websites link to my article because it was so good, I get higher rankings from the search engines. I, become, I became a work cited. I became a reference. A quality website linked to my website erases my quality as well. As you build quality links to your page, your page will move up in the search rankings. Um, the opposite of that is also true, unfortunately. Low quality websites linking to my website will hurt my rankings. Guilty by association. Guilt by association. Guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. That's how the search engines are. That if they see a bunch of websites that are low quality, selling spam content, ripping off emails, you know, low quality bad websites, if a bunch of them are linked together, and there's one of those that's linked to yours, Google will see guilt by association. So all of those websites and yours will suffer in SEO because Google doesn't want these bad websites to appear higher for people to get viruses and spam and hurt the credibility of the search engine of Bing or Google. So that is something that could happen and we will talk about how to deal with that. We'll say, I don't know those websites. Don't group me with them. We'll see how we can deal with that. We want positive websites linking to us and we want to deal with negative websites linking to us. But we might not even know we've got negative websites linking to us. When we log into our webmaster tools, I'll show you the screen to check that. The old days, in the old days, it used to be that I created a website and I, cre and I bought six other websites and I linked them all together. And that used to be good for my SEO because there were links to my website. Nowadays, that doesn't quite work anymore. Nowadays, it could be actually very detrimental. If I bought victorsbakery.com and I also bought Victor's Dog Walking and Victor's Realty and Victor's Teaching and I linked them all together, that might not really help me. It might even hurt me. Because why would this teaching website be linked with this baking website? And why would this dog walking website be linked with this realty website? There's no relationship to them linking. So the search engines take that badly because that's what spam sites do, and that could hurt you. Yes? Yes. Um, I have purchased uh, three websites, and my intent is to have them all in the same materials. Uh, rather than opting. Your example was different types of websites. Mine are consonant. They're pretty much the same thing in each one. Is that a help for Hindus? Yes and no. If it's the same kind of content, it's a help. But if it's the exact same content, that's not good. If you've got, you know, if you kind of copied and pasted your text and pictures from one to the other, that's not good. But if you're putting different kinds of content on each of them, that's much better. That's even better. Very good. That's what you want to do. You can have different names and such, similar content, but not the same. Related content. So that's sometimes peop less people come in with that. I've been teaching this SEO class for a few years. People come in and used to come in and, and suddenly be shocked at some of these things that I'm talking about because it's like, well, this is what used to work or this is what someone sold me on. And now you're saying it doesn't work. Yeah, because this stuff changes. The goalpost changes. The search engines change the target. Because once the good guys use these techniques, eventually the bad guys use them, and the bad guys abuse them. So the search engines change the rules. We have to keep up with the rules. I mentioned a website last time, I believe, that helps you keep up with this, didn't I? Or did I not? Did I mention a website that helps you keep up with, the, with this land of search engines? No? It was searchengineland.com <laughs> searchengineland.com it's one of the many websites out there I, I, I really like this one it's always relevant and timely it's got lots of backlinks <clears throat> articles content on keeping up with this land of search engines so you want to go there once in a while and check out what's new 
Let's see what's new. I haven't checked it. Google expands PLA view test displays 16 product listing ads. Um, I have to read that because some of those buzzwords there, I'm not sure what they mean. You can install Android apps directly from Google search results. Interesting. So if you've got an Android app, it looks now you're gonna get a you're gonna get a little bonus there. If you've got an Android app, someone will be able to install your app directly from search instead of having to jump through the hoops of going to the app store. Google Core algorithm updates continues as SEOs notice weekend Google update. So apparently very recently Google changed their algorithm a bit. I want to read here and see what's different. What's, what's updated? And the thing about the search engines, they're, they're going to publish best practices and, stuff and such, but they're not going to give away their trade secrets. So a lot of what we know about SEO comes from blogs like this where they test there's a hypothesis and they test it like a good scientist. They think of an idea. What if I've got 10 websites linked to me? How does that affect my SEO? What if I've got this and that? How does that affect my SEO? That's what these websites are doing. Have a hypothesis that they test and then they write about it. Yes? I was going to say, I, I, I saw this book and it was on the actual map that Google uses for rankings. It was an older book. It was like about maybe seven years old. Mm -hmm. And the map they used it was so complex. I don't know if it was fed the internet, but whether it was actually from Google, but the whole book was just mapping out what formulas, and I was like, wow. And for regular people, that's worthless, because what am I going to do with that? But Google is going to publish these do's and don'ts, and then we're going to read blogs that convert the math into real, actionable items. That might be interesting to look at, but yeah, seven years old, the, uh, the algorithm has changed 40 times, probably. The blogger's guide to this and that. Here's a study talking about backlinks, etc. 11 things to do now to keep your AdWords healthy. Google Search Console adds AMP errors and so forth. So you can look at that on your own. There's always something new to learn. What I'm getting at in the book is the book gives you concrete examples of how to attract backlinks, and I'll mention a few of them. Again, it's not a very expensive book. And so um, this, this is mentioning up here, to be seen as a real authority, your site needs incoming links or backlinks from other authority sites. Since one of the updates, I no longer recommend using any type of automated link building tool. What? Well, a few years ago, you could buy software that would create many websites and links back to your main website. And that used to work. And now even this author here is saying, I don't recommend that anymore. <coughs> don't recommend that because the search engines change the algorithm, they change the goalposts. And now, because spammers can do that and do that and abuse that, you don't want to get any software that automatically creates backlinks. I used to have someone coming in here years ago that I would hear him in between breaks telling people, hey, you want to buy the software that'll get you so much traffic? And then after he's finished talking to them, later on I would tell them, uh, don't buy that software because it doesn't work. It might work for the moment, but when the algorithm changes, they're going to take a big hit. They're going to be a spammer, even though I'm just trying to sell my grandma's cookies online. I'm not a spammer. You're walking like a spammer. You're talking like a spammer. You're a spammer. So... If I cannot use automated link building tools, how can I get enough links to rank well? To answer the question, let me ask you this. Do you believe your page deserves to rank well based on the quality of your content and the authority of your site? If you answer no, that's what the search engines are asking themselves. If your website doesn't answer yes on that, yes, I've got quality content, yes, I'm building authority, then no, you won't get ranked very well. Um, going on with other concepts. So it's talking about, I'm sure you are concerned about building incoming links to your pages. What's the best way? Well, the good thing is Google seems to pay less attention to inbound anchor text and more attention to the topic of the page. That just means it used to be that Someone linked to my website, yes. And on their website, they had my keyword, right? We developed our keywords. And I wanted and I needed to have my keyword on their website 
as an active link back to my website. Nowadays, that's not as important. As long as you're getting a link from a website, it doesn't have to have your keywords on their website. As long as you're getting a link back from someone else's website to my website, that's good. Because the big thing about it is, it's going to go on here to say, links from other websites that you do not control. The very best backlinks you can get to your site are the ones you do not create. These are not backlinks from other sites where you did not request a link, nor do they have any say in the anchor text. These backlinks are the holy grail, and they are also the most difficult to get. If I can't edit someone else's website to give me a link, if I can't ask someone else to give me a link and influence <coughs> them, how do I get links from other websites? It sounds impossible. Well, this chapter goes on to give examples of how to do that via content. Create content. That's the big secret. Create content that will cause people to link to you. One example of content is an infographic. I'll show exactly what it is in a moment, but let's say I create an infographic. It's so amazing. I share it on social media and I get links from Twitter, from Facebook, from that email newsletter. Because I might have had an email newsletter one of the people there has a lot of followers on Twitter. They tweeted my link to my infographic, and that give, gives me backlinks to my website, helping my rankings. So it's going to be about content. You know, what was, what, was that, what was the saying a few elections ago? It's the economy, dummy. Well, here, it's the content, dummy. Mm -hmm. What you're doing online to rank well is all about your content, not about tricks. Not about techniques that are going to change. It's about content. What are you putting online that will get you found? This video right here. This is relevant. This is timely. We're building authority. In, in one week, it's got 255 views. It'll, it'll get up higher. We've got another video there that's got 10,000 views. You don't know what's going to be a big hit. Taking a quick look at our YouTube here. How to use Peach. It's a week old, 255 views. How to create an Android app. It's got 10,000 views in three months. How to write HTML basic code, only 29 views in three months. So you don't know what's going to be a hit. You're going to be using Twitter or YouTube or social media or blogs on a regular basis. That's the timely part. Not just once a year. Don't add a new article once a year. Once a quarter is better. Once a month is better. Once a week is best. Actually, once a day is best, but I don't have time to write once a day. I don't have time to hire people to write once a day. But all the big websites like Search Engine Land have a brand new thing every day, three times a day, and therefore they have a lot of traffic, a lot of content to share to build authority. Inbound links. So let me show you here concretely. Okay, infographic. I like this tip here a lot. Uh, infographics are basically interesting representations of boring data. Let me show you one of my colleagues. He was actually a student of mine, and now he works with me on and off, and he's a superstar on Pinterest. So check out this address, pinterest.com slash Mosher13. He has this account, and he uses Pinterest. He shares content. And he's got a pin board here. He's got a collection of content he called infographics. Infographics, you've probably seen them before. You didn't know the name of it, but here you'll see it. So Pinterest.com slash Moshe13. And when I say he's a superstar on Pinterest, 33,000 followers qualifies as a superstar. So he's got 33,000 and a half people following him on Pinterest. The point of any social media, the more followers you have, the more could follow through when he posts about, you know, <coughs> discount on our video lecture on how to use Pinterest this weekend only. There's some amount of people that could buy that lecture. But if, if you let it, uh, Pinterest is really annoying nowadays. You have to log in to see anything. But if you can click on the infographic group, the infographic has 2,000 pins, 2,000 con pieces of content in there, 33,000 people are following. So every time he adds a new infographic, 33,000 people could see it. So what an infographic is, for example, mobile gaming, 
by the numbers. This could be a very boring Excel spreadsheet that shows the increase of mobile gaming throughout the years, which is exploding. For example, the maker of Candy Crush was bought recently for like $2 billion. $2 billion. And here, instead of boring graphics, you've got interesting old-school retro graphics to catch your attention and to show that it's $33 billion market. And if I could click to zoom in, I could see it more, but Pinterest is going to ask me to, to sign in, probably. But these are infographics. These are, these are uh, graphical representations of boring information, like this. These are obviously a little harder to create than a simple spreadsheet, but these are very popular. I'd rather look th at this, and I would rather share this than just a very basic spreadsheet, a very basic PowerPoint, even though you can create some nice infographics in PowerPoint if you, if you try. And so I, I follow him, let's say. I really like it. I click Share. Now I've shared his graphic to my followers, he's getting more traffic back to his Pinterest or his website because on the infographic you will also have your credits. You will have created by PMB Interactive. See more at whatever. So if I'm making an infographic, I have my branding on it to direct people back to my website, to get backlinks to my website. Yes? Uh, but that, when you say created by, like, uh, Mr. Campos, uh, that's just a text uh, writing. It's not really a link, is it? Yes. On a graphic itself, it's not a link. On a graphic <laughs> itself, it's not an active link. That's true. But notice, it has the, usually at the bottom somewhere, oh, they put a QR code. So that's another way. Someone scans that code and it goes back to the website. But it's also on this website where in in the website here you'll also have a link back to it so you can put the link on the graphic you can put the link in the description just any way to get your traffic back to your website so let me see here uh, infographic about social media 2015 about 2016 So newscred.com was the number one link there when I searched. They're writing this blog post. Never heard of newscred before, but they've got a contact. They've got blogs and careers. I scroll down. There's some text for me to read at. Or read, that is. Then an actual infographic. This is a simple pie chart in 2015. Total social network users in 2015 in millions. So 179 million, which actually sounds small, but it breaks it down by age, and then Facebook, share of Facebook, <coughs> I don't know about this, I'm, I'm kind of not trusting these numbers actually. 60 million users of Instagram, that should be more like 400 million users. Hmm. But anyway, this is an infographic, a pie chart, it's got some text and all of that, and there's much more complex ones. I really like this tip from the book because um, these things are interesting to look at and to share. They take more effort to create, however, but you can use PowerPoint to some degree, and you can also search for infographic templates infographic templates or infographic maker infographic generators some of them are free and some of them not uh, here's just one random picto chart create easy infographics reports presentations yes is there a certain format that infographics are good with like ping uh, vector mostly ping because they're usually flat graphics like this so png type graphics rather than jpegs because you're going to lose quality when you've got these solid colors if your infographic has a lot of photos, then a JPEG would work. But usually you're going to do pings with vectors, because they're going to be nice and clean, easy to read, and small. What is PNG? 
PNG. It's a, it's a graphic format. Mm -hmm. The big ones are JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs. Um, so that's one of the big ones here that the book advises. Infographics. I like them, but they do take effort to set up. Questions on infographics? The next tip, I, I would skip it. This is really technical. I wouldn't worry about that one. This is creating scripts and tools that people will bookmark and share. So here is like a, a health food website. Let's say I'm selling health supplements. And on the website, I've got this, this really cool like calorie tracker. That's hard. That's got a lot of programming to get that to work. So I don't bother with number two. I don't recommend it really for anyone. That's really complex to do. You might get good return on investment, but really your investment is a lot of coding, and you're not going to find any like free of these out online, really, any good ones. Just never mind number two. Number three, I also say never mind about that one, forums, which are you've got a website, people can register, log in, create comments, and all of that. And in the old days, I might have said, yeah, forums are useful. Nowadays, I don't because forums can easily devolve into shouting matches, off-topic posts, spam, unless you're moderating them. And now you've become a moderator instead of running your business. So I don't recommend forums because later on it'll say social media. That is what I do recommend. Put your energy on social media rather than forums. And this is from first-hand knowledge. We had a forum for one of our clients, and it was running really well until a couple of months later, when suddenly it was full of spam. Okay, we need to go, we needed to go in and update the plugin and do moderation a little bit, and then it kept coming back, and we're like, never mind, we'll keep it on social media. And I haven't done a forum for a client in years, so I don't recommend you do one. Number four, I highly recommend free downloads like software or PDFs. So create something and give it away for free. A simple PDF. It can show you a direct example right here on our website, pmdinteractive.com. Over on the blog, we've got an article there about passwords. You know, passwords are getting hacked all the time. There's an article about um, how to create a good password, and then um, it's a free download. See somewhere here. A free download so that, oh, here it is. So you read the quick article, the quick synopsis of it, and then it's got a PDF here, free PDF download with a few more steps. And this is all PowerPoint, just basic PowerPoint. Turn it into a PDF, share it. So it's been shared on different social networks. Twitter doesn't tell you how many tweets anymore, unfortunately, but that was dozens. And that's the, that's the concept there. Create some sort of free PDF, free one page info sheet, give it away, make sure you've got your credit on it and your website and such, and on a PDF you can make an active link, so when you they click on your credit it goes back to the website. Yes? I was going to say, I, I have this backwater site on my, in my domain and I have this PDF download, and when I look at my, my analytics, I was surprised at how many times that thing had gotten downloaded. Mm -hmm. It was like a sleeper at the time. I never thought that it was that popular. It probably had some relevance or was timely and therefore helped your authority because you had good content. So this one's not that hard to create. Think about this oftentimes couples with an infographic, but this is a multi-page document. You, know, you can click on it to view it. Um, 12 pages. It's graphics heavy, so it's not that hard to create. You've got a you know you've got an intro screen and then talking about the heart bleed vulnerability. If you remember that from a few years ago, suddenly every website in the world was broken because of heart bleed and what it is. Then there's some links within this article about, well, here's three different ways to, or two different ways to make a good password. And then again, very light on text, more graphics. This section here, this is just a template. It's telling you good, bad, better, uh, ways to remember it, and it goes on. And then it's done and it wraps it up and in short there's a wrap-up page credits and links there you go that could be shared on various social media giving you backlinks someone else could write an article they embed your PDF on their website that's fine because it gives me a link back anyway sometimes people think well I don't want my stuff to get shared 
you really want to re-examine that thinking because nowadays with modern websites everything can be shared, everything can be linked, and those links can really help you because the search engines are looking for backlinks because that's one of the ways they're going to be able to tell good websites. <clears throat> if you don't want to sh host it on your own website, let's say you don't have a lot of space or it's a slow server, you can look into getting a free account at slideshare.com .net, slideshare.net. Um, this is like the YouTube of PowerPoints. People upload PowerPoint presentations here, create profiles, give away their PowerPoints or sell them or whatever, make money off of them, get followers. And it's so big that LinkedIn bought them. See, LinkedIn logo. I don't know how much they paid, but probably hundreds of millions of dollars. And so SlideShare's <coughs> slide been around probably five to ten years or so. And that's a place for you to upload your PDFs. Can you download them? Yeah. Free? Yeah. Right here. Depending on the account, usually there's a free download. Some of them might make private or paid, but the, the book is saying, you know, you want to give away some of the some of your stuff. Because this article about the the passwords that we made, okay, it's a little bit of knowledge. And some things might be more complex, like the five easy ways to install a WordPress theme. And we write it down here. Some people are going to, that's going to be enough for them. But most people, I don't want to touch it. It seems complicated. Let me hire you. So the, her, the first one's free. Yes? Um, the credits on, uh, on the WordPress, the theme that you would use, I'm just using a theme one. The bottom has the credits and you show the credits for thousand for copyright theme. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the credit I would use for my website? Is that the credit the people who created the theme template or is that actually me? Or the company? By default, your WordPress themes will have the credit of the creator of the theme, most likely. You can leave it as is, or you can change it, because usually most themes are open source, and it's OK for you to change it. So check, check the when you downloaded it, there's probably a, some info about the theme. Check if it's OK to change those things, it usually. Yeah. So I would put in your own copyright there. Is that the same thing for the images one? Is that, can I use that image that they have on the theme template? That I can't really answer. You do have to look at the at the details of the theme, the you know, the readme file or the about info of the theme. Some of them do come with like a stock image that you can use. But if you use it and you downloaded it and a and, and hundred other people also downloaded that theme, they might they might be using that same picture too. And then your website looks like it's got stock images that are not unique to you. So there's pros and cons. Number five, posts that include lists. This is one that I recommend. We create blog posts with a top five this, a top ten that, a top thirty-seven whatever. There, ha there doesn't have to be any any reason to your number, the top three, you know, the top three WordPress themes. The number doesn't matter. But breaking it down into lists, into digestible chunks, is what matters. Because people nowadays are getting short attention spans. And so right here we've got our top WordPress plugins. This is not exactly numbered, one, two, three, whatever, it doesn't matter, but we've broken it down to three plugins in this article, and then part two will have three more. So you might have a great idea for the top 10 WordPress plugins. Why not break it down into two articles, one to publish this month and one to publish next month, to get people to come back? So instead of all 10 at once, five this month, five next month. And then that, especially if it's relevant and timely, could also get some shares over to social media. And um, backlinks, links from someone else's site back to yours. Like uh, that Texcoco client that I, I might have mentioned in this class, that Mexican food restaurant, they get articles written up all the time from various food critics and such. Recently, Jonathan Gold, 
who is a Pulitzer Prize winning critic, um, created an article right here, the 101 best restaurants in LA, and my client is on there somewhere, some number in there. But there's the article in there, you can go in and read it by a big name in the industry. There's a link from their website, the LA Times, back to the client's website. That's a big backlink, that's a big get. So the more links you have to your website, the better. But the bigger those websites are, linking back to your website, that's even better. Quality websites linking to your website raises your quality. How did they get this link? Great food, right? Marketing to let people know the restaurant exists. Great food. The critic came in, ate the food, put them on the list. So that's still a hard answer to give to people. How do I get these links? It's your content. The content of the restaurant is the food. The food is, the food is, um, you know, hyped on the blog, on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. The food is on TV, like you saw the commercial. It gets you to go to the restaurant, buy the, buy the food, and that there's your return on investment. Let's see. Uh, there's a few more. I'll stop right there. Uh, you should check out the book at some point. Article marketing forum participation. Okay, let me just say about that one. Forum participation. I don't recommend you create a forum on your site, but I do recommend you go to other people's websites, other people's forums, and comment there. For example, this website is all about food and babies, I guess. Hidden berry cream cheese tort. Torte. So if you go to an article, I read the article, I see the great photos, I read the text, I have always the ability to share. So if I share over to my Facebook, I've made a link from my Facebook back to her website, there's a backlink. I might write my own article on cream cheese myself and then link to, back to this one as an inspiration. There's a backlink for them. The point of what I'm getting at, the latest comment here on the book, there, right here, forum participation or commenting on people's blog posts. Go to people's blog posts, and if they give you the ability, comment. A relevant comment, of course, a comment that adds to the conversation, not just, not just says, yummy but something relevant, just looking delicious, uh, looking here, looks delicious, thanks for sharing, looks delicious, thanks for share recipe. Hmm. I, I love cream cheese and fruit together, there's also been a can of homemade jam that's been staring at me from the fridge, asking me to use it. Okay, so you want to participate in other people's forums, not just to contribute to the conversation, but let me ask you this, out of these three, out of these four names that I'm seeing here, Kira, Monster, Katie, and Sasha. Katie's doing it wrong. Do you know why? She has no link. Good eye. She has no link back to her website. That's a link. That's a link. Oh. That's a link. She even put a link back to her website. Kira over here has a link back uh, over to her website. She's got an active link, perhaps. Um, but you, if you have the ability to comment on a blog post, so there's, there's comment down here, name required, email required, website not required, comment. And you might think it's not required, I won't put it. I'm going to tell you it's required. Because if you comment on someone else's blog post and put your website, there's a backlink. Now, they could delete your comment. They could have a moderation queue, which means that your comment won't show up right away, or ever. Um, they could go in and leave your comment, but remove your link if your comment seemed too needy or too commercial, let's say. So there's those factors. But it doesn't hurt to comment on topic relevant to that blog post, add your link, and if they let it through, you'll get a link back to your website.
plus you'll be building your authority as you comment more and more throughout the months on this site and other baking sites my Victor's Bakery could start to build this authority other people Anne might reply Anne wrote something and then Michelle replied there's real interaction happening there Anne is getting some authority she doesn't have a link back to her website she doesn't need it she she's just a regular person perhaps but Michelle over here does have a link over to her site Michelle's the moderator. Probably. probably. If she's, she's the one answering. if she's the one most answering, she might be the moderator. And that's good. You want to get on their good side so that when you do post some more of that um, commercial stuff, they might give you a pass. Yeah. Does it help if the name we use is our actual company name? I don't believe it helps or hurts, but it does depend on the on the website. Some websites might see that it's a commercial uh, it's a company name and not and, and not like that right away and not let you post. I don't know. It's going to depend on the site. Usually what we do is we do post as the company, but if we need to, within the article or the little post, the comment, we do write our name as a person. You know, we're representing the company. I wrote this saying, you know, yeah, with a little kind of credit to ourselves. And that's it. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. It really depends where you're posting. And then there's these, there's these other ones. Again, you, you should look at the book it yourself, but I'll, I'll say also YouTube videos. You need to get on that. That's yeah. hard. I would have to be first. On the YouTube thing, here's, here's my big thing. Is I'm thinking, should I just link back to YouTube or should I host a video? Is it going to help me if I just have it on YouTube, have a channel on YouTube, and then post it now uh, link back to Because now with HTML5, you can do that. Where you got to you know, deal with all the files. If you are going to host it yourself, you are going to have more effort to put into. If you put your own video on your own site, you need to make sure that your, that your server is fast enough to show the videos or people will get annoyed with all that buffering. You need to make sure you've got the space for them. If you keep adding more and more videos, hopefully you don't run out of space. And so there's those negatives that I think are too much. Usually for all the clients, we put the videos on YouTube. YouTube has infinite bandwidth, infinite storage, and they give you the link to embed your video from your YouTube channel directly on your site. It doesn't hit our data. And it doesn't hit your data, your bandwidth. That's what we've got here on this Peach article. There's a, or this one about Android. We've got this article, this blog post on Android, and there's a video embedded, but that's off on YouTube. You can change the settings of YouTube so that it doesn't have the big YouTube logo on it. And then there it is. No one will tell that it's on YouTube, and it doesn't matter really that it's on YouTube, wherever it is, as long as you're showing a relevant video. And that, like I said, that video's got 10,000 and a half views, and that's also bringing traffic back to this article and the, and the site. So video is the next big thing. You want to read into it, and I, in the social media class, I do a, a couple of days on YouTube. Uh, one on setting up YouTube channel and optimizing, and another on creating a YouTube video. So be on the lookout for that. And there's many more things. So you want to look at those. We're going to take a break in a moment, but really good book. I highly recommend it. Any questions? This is a search 160. Yeah. Okay, let's take a break, and when we come back, we will uh, we will look into our webmaster tools. Do I have backlinks, positive or negative, and what do I do with them? It's one fifty-two. Let's take a break until one until two o two, and we'll go on.